This project, the Deep Stem 3, was the first time that three counties came together to create a new reef. And it was a wonderful collaboration between the Bay County Tourist Development Council, the Walton County Tourist Development Council, and the Okaloosa Tourist Development Council, to really to pull together to showcase you know, what we have in our marine resources. All of these destinations have very, very rich fishing, fishing culture, very rich diving culture, and providing a site as big as the deep stem, it's actually the second largest artificial reef that we have in our areas, um, provides a, a really awesome new asset that we can all rally behind and talk about. This was one of those great projects where we were able to come together very quickly because we all have a common goal, and that is to enhance the tourism and recreational activities in the Gulf of Mexico and along Northwest Florida. The destinations in Northwest Florida are really dependent on these artificial reefs. Without these artificial reefs, there just wouldn't be enough places for people to go fishing. There wouldn't be enough places for people to go diving. Here in Northwest Florida, we have a lot of sand. While we do have some of those the, the limestone outcroppings, it's really not that much. Look at our sugar white sands on our beaches. That, that extends into the Gulf, and so the artificial reefs actually create habitat. And why is it important in places like the Gulf Coast? Because the bottom is pretty devoid of any structure, so you're providing that structure that is so needed for animals to settle, to aggregate around, um, and, and generally increase your biomass of life. You want sessile animals to settle all over your artificial reef, little barnacles, soft corals, hard corals, um, and to grow the biomass generally provides shelter for baby fish, bigger fish, and the predatory fish that we like to catch. Uh, and multiply that formula over a wide area. Behind us, we have the RV Deep Stem 3. It's about 42 years old. It's a 239-foot research vessel that was primarily used for seafloor exploration. It's been since decommissioned. Here in Northwest Florida, we really rely on artificial reefs to create that habitat that's important for the native species, but it's also really important for the fishing and diving industries. We have the Shipwreck Trail, which extends all the way along the, the Gulf of Mexico. And it includes uh, reefs like the Oriskany off of Pensacola and the Red Sea off of Panama City Beach. We have a Shipwreck Trail in Florida, and this just adds to being the third largest ship in that trail. It's a partnership. It is. It's a partnership between several different entities to make this happen today. That's exactly right. And it's the first of its kind in, in Florida. We haven't had a tri-county project of this nature before. So we're setting a precedent for the artificial reef programs. That's great. Sinking an artificial reef is not an easy proposition. It's come all the way from Lafitte, Louisiana. It went through cleanup in Orange Beach, Alabama. And now we're about 30 nautical miles southwest from the St. Andrews Pass, where it's slated for deployment here in the Gulf. Any artificial reef project, they all pose their own challenges and, and everyone is pretty much different. So one of the most important aspects of you know, getting a vessel ready to be able to create an artificial reef is you have to take everything out that could pollute the Gulf of Mexico. The engines, the petroleum products, the wiring, the glass, I mean all of those things that could be hazards in the future have to be out before we sink the boat. All the plugs have been pulled and she is starting to sink. So I suspect she'll be on the bottom in the next 30 minutes or so. Engineers have a pretty thorough method for getting these sunk. They will typically weld off porthole doors so that way the compartments can fill and it serves as a bit of ballast. So the engineering is working out perfectly. The holes are typically cut in a zigzag pattern so it goes from one end to the other to sink gradually. We can see that the bow is starting to go first, so it should self-correct here in a moment, and we'll start to see the back of the boat fill with water as soon as one edge, either the port or starboard side, catches a wave. Uh, we actually attached uh, about 20 modules to the back deck of this vessel, which is something that's never been done before, but because it's that concrete limestone, it encourages growth a lot more than just bare steel does. So hopefully that jump starts the process a little bit, and this will be a more productive reef in a, in a shorter amount of time. So once this vessel hits the bottom, um, 
the more important part is that it's going to bring an impressive array of fish who aren't immediately used to having a structure like this in the vicinity. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of life three to five months from now and then within one to five years it's going to become a full reef community encrusted with your sponges and your corals. It'll give divers um, and anglers alike a new reef to hunt species, fry species such as amberjack, snapper and grouper on as well. And, and of course it's a big draw for tourism. It's going to be a part of our shipwreck trail. So this is in 135 feet of water um, and the structure itself, the, the ship is 239 feet long and 65 foot tall. And the rule is you have to deploy the vessel and make sure that the top of it is at least one half the water depth from the surface. That's to allow for large vessels to pass over top of it and not hit it. Um, it also increases stability of the vessel as well. You know, one of the great things about this project is it allows the, you know, the three counties to come together. But as we look down the road, there's going to be other collaborative projects to showcase, you know, what we have in our marine resources. Because anglers don't care about, you know, county lines. The fish don't care about county lines. The, the divers and the fishermen don't really care who's paying for this. They don't care what community is, is necessarily being benefited more than, than another. They just want a place to go out and go fishing and diving. But we'll also do things on our own to make sure that you know we're building a you know a network of artificial reefs along the entire Gulf of Mexico that makes it easier for the anglers and the divers to get to. So they're not going to all be concentrated in one place, but extended across the Gulf to really to enhance the habitat and enhance the resource. It's been a good investment. That's for sure. Uh, from what we've seen so far and to be able to deploy these artificial reefs on the, on the bottom of the Gulf is, it pays off in dividends, I believe, in the long run.